I'm going to give you five principles that I really want you to take away and use. So grab the opportunity today, please. The first letter and the first word is gratitude. Why is it so important? It's one of the strongest sources of positive energy that we have, and it's easily accessible. And that we can do with almost any business we're in, any chance that we have to be in business, especially given that probably half of our country will never have access to work, income, resources, learning, etc. So find something positive about where you are and what you're doing. So being grateful for what you've got is important. The other reason is because you have to be tough in business, and sometimes it can be tough. It could be laying people off, but it's to keep the business alive. Why is gratitude important? Because in those moments, you can't sit and worry about your decision. Once you've made it, you've thought it through, you've weighed it up, you've made it, it is time to move on. And focusing on gratitude is a fantastic way of moving away from that area of, of possible depression and worry about what you're doing. I've also put humble, but to be tough, it is about gratitude. And here's a very interesting psychological stat. You cannot be unhappy and grateful at the same time. So when you've made a tough decision, you're sitting there thinking, oh my God, what have I done? Am I going to be okay? You're in that sort of unhappy space. The moment you are grateful for something, you move swiftly out of it and you become a lot more productive. And there's three things that I think of every single day, which are the first three, but there's plenty more besides them. Health. The morning you wake up sick, isn't it the end of the world? You can't wait for tomorrow to come. And God forbid you're at hospital having tests, it's even worse. So when you wake up healthy, isn't that a wonderful start to the day? Yeah? It's a blessing. You wake up healthy. And then jobs. I mentioned now, half this country don't have jobs. They don't have access to learning. They don't have access to resources. So if you have a job and you have the opportunity to learn, to be here, to grow, whatever it is, then you are extremely lucky and focus on that all the time. Even if your business is pressurized, even if you're wondering how you're going to get through, you've still at least got the opportunity to do that. And if you go north of our borders, I think the odds start to get higher and higher. So it's a privileged situation. And I'm sure you can add many more. I add one other every single morning. Having lived for 10 years in Manchester, where it rains nearly 300 days a year, the sunshine. You got it. Every single day. And my guarantee to you is if you focus on gratitude, you will start the day with so much positive energy. It helps you deal with the pressure that sometimes comes, especially on a bad day. Next, we come to reframing. Of all the points, this could be the most important of the lot because it's where you take a situation that scares you and worries you. And without changing the facts, you make it exciting and interesting for yourself. To me, the, the people who are most successful I've ever met are those who just keep reframing challenges the whole time. It's always exciting. You hear the negative people who always find a problem. You find the positive people who reframe it. Something goes wrong. Okay, well, it's a chance to grow in this area then. And if you don't do that, I think it's very difficult to be uh, successful in life. Reframing, whenever you get that pit in your stomach, you know that horrible moment when you go into a meeting and you think, oh, don't, I don't want to do this. That's your cue to reframe it and say, hey, Tough meeting, tough client, great opportunity to show my selling skills or my management skills or whatever. Turn it around. Make it exciting at least. Make it a pleasurable experience and you've got more chance of being successful. That's G-R-E, empathy, or emotional intelligence, or for me, the simple word that sums it all up is observation. And I sometimes think that we rush into offices and we've got so much on our mind and we dive into our work <coughs> and we forget to see the people around us and where they are at. And we need their help. I'm going to make a statement. I believe women are better at observation in general than men are. Ladies, am I right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer. Two ladies meet and it's, oh, your hair's changed and the earrings and the dress and the shoes. And I couldn't tell you what I wore yesterday. Seriously, I have to phone my wife. What was I wearing yesterday? As men in general, we don't notice these things. But here's the upside for the guys in the room. You can learn from the ladies in your life how to observe the little moment longer. Because women tend to walk into an, a situation and they see people and they will notice when someone's unhappy or something's wrong and they will probably, they're quicker to go and deal with it. And what happens? You help other people in your team, they're going to help you. You're going to have a more successful team. G-R-E-A. A is adaptable. Two things I believe help you be adaptable. The first one is you've got to take your ego out of it. A lot of people you hear, especially the really successful people, will say to you, um, I've been doing it this way, I've done it this way for 15 years and look where the company is and I'm not going to change. Well, it doesn't work. We live in a, such a rapidly changing world. Uh, you've got to put your ego aside. The second thing is, it's important to learn something new. And that can mean doing courses, MBAs, diplomas, etc. It can also mean just picking up one small thing every single day that you can. Adaptability, learning something new every day. Try and make it 
something you do at the end of the day, when you look back on the day, you've learned something new about something to do with your business, technology, whatever it is, finances. Just make it a habit, because if you're not learning, and other people are, they'll be moving ahead of you, and very, very quickly. And the final letter is T, G-R-E-A-T, great. Teamwork, that's all about us and we, not I and me. Teamwork, the words you use. We're in control of our words. And whether it's in the workplace or at home, we, 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 we get the opportunity to change our words if they come out wrong. So it starts with an intention, then it's a thought. Then, at the spoken word, you can change it. So when you say something about, yes, well, I was doing this, and I, uh, you know, you can stop and go, sorry, I meant we, us, the team. Um, and people generally will let you off if you change it. And two things happen when you change your words. They come out differently in terms of actions and deeds, so you get a better result when you say the right things. And it starts to change backwards your thoughts and intentions until they become a habit. So your words carry an actual effect. And that's why they're so vital that you use them. And I'm sure you can go back to when you were a kid and someone said, you'll never amount to anything or you're useless at this. And you never forget those words, eh? You never, ever forget them. They're burnt in deep. So think of the words you use and you do have a chance to change them when they come out wrong.